In a world where seafood is king, blood clans reign with a mix of fear, fear and fascination. Could your favorite seafood be a hidden danger? Jesus Christ. Find out why these creatures are stirring up controversy in kitchens and cultures around the globe. Serving up smiles one dish at a time. Food is thy mood is now live. Hello, moody foodies. Let me ask, what's your greatest fear? Buckle up because what you're about to learn in this video could save your life. Welcome to the world of the deadly blood clam. So, what exactly is a blood clam, you ask? It's a mollusk with a pair of shells that protect the soft, delicious flesh inside. And that's where the horror begins. Crack one open and it's like stumbling upon a gruesome crime scene. Unlike your typical clam, the blood clam's blood is red, just like ours. And guess what? It contains hemoglobin, that iron-rich protein that helps transport oxygen through the body. Why does a clam need blood, you wonder? Well, blood clams prefer to settle in murky, low-oxygen waters. And like us, they need that hemoglobin to get their daily dose of oxygen. So these clams are basically the thrill-seekers of the seafood world. But why, then, does the blood clam stand out with such a risky reputation? Before we delve into the risks, let's take a moment to appreciate the broader historical context. Clams have been a staple in various global cuisines for centuries. From the clam chowders of North America to the clam pasta dishes of Italy, these mollusks have been celebrated for their unique flavors and textures. In many coastal communities, clams are more than just food. They're a symbol of sustenance and a connection to the sea. This historical backdrop makes the tale of the blood clam even more striking, contrasting its dangerous nature with its relatives' esteemed culinary status. But here's the million-dollar question. Is the taste worth the risk? Blood clams might delight your taste buds with their mild and savory flavor, but they've also claimed their fair share of human lives. Now let's pivot to the environmental aspect that sets the stage for risk on a plate. The health of marine life, particularly mollusks like blood clams, are deeply influenced by their environment. Factors such as water pollution and climate change have significant impacts. Pollutants in the water can be absorbed by clams, leading to greater risks when consumed by humans. Moreover, changing ocean temperatures and acidity levels can affect their growth and survival. This environmental angle is crucial, as it not only affects the safety of consuming blood clams, but also the overall health and balance of marine ecosystems. So how do these environmental factors translate into real threats for those who enjoy seafood like blood clams. Let's take a trip down memory lane to 1988 in China's Jiangsu province. They were dealing with a nasty viral outbreak, hepatitis A to be precise. Meanwhile, in Shanghai, blood clams were wreaking havoc, killing 31 people and making 300,000 others seriously ill. What's intriguing is that the symptoms of those killed by blood clams in Shanghai mirrored those of hepatitis A victims in Jiangsu province. Before we unravel this mystery further, let's compare blood clams to other perilous delicacies from the sea. Around the world, certain seafoods carry a notorious reputation for danger yet remain culinary favorites. Take the Japanese fugu or pufferfish, which can be lethal if not prepared correctly. Similarly, certain oysters and shellfish can cause serious illness due to toxins or bacteria they harbor. These examples highlight a fascinating aspect of human cuisine, the willingness to flirt with danger for a unique gastronomic experience. Could the allure of blood clams be similar? And what sets them apart from these other risky delicacies? It puts the risks associated with blood clams in a global perspective. To solve this puzzling mystery, we need to dive deeper. The killer blood clams in question hailed from Chidong, a city on the Yangtze River. 
Yes, the same river that turned blood red at one point. But don't blame the clams for that one. So, can we cook the death out of these clams and make them safe to eat? Thanks to poor sanitation practices, Hepatitis A-laden human waste found its way into the clam's water supply. Here's where the blood clam's unique filtration skills turned a bad situation into a deadly one. These clams suck in a whopping 40 liters or 9 gallons of water daily. As they feast on microscopic phytoplankton, viruses and bacteria hitch a ride into their flesh. The more they eat, the more infected they become. It's a process known as bioaccumulation. Gross, right? However, it's not all doom and gloom in the world of seafood. What are some of these groundbreaking methods and how are they revolutionizing the way we consume seafood? Recent advancements in aquaculture and food safety are making waves. Scientists and farmers are developing innovative methods to raise clams and other seafood in cleaner, controlled environments, reducing the risk of disease. Additionally, cutting-edge technology in food safety is enabling more precise detection of pathogens in seafood before it reaches the consumer. These advancements are crucial as they not only enhance safety but also contribute to sustainable seafood practices. Ensuring these culinary delights remain part of our diets without the accompanying risks. Next, let's delve into the cultural significance surrounding blood clams. In certain regions, especially in parts of China, blood clams are not just seen as a risky delicacy but also hold symbolic and traditional value. Why do these clams hold such importance in these communities? And how does this affect their consumption despite the known risks? They are sometimes used in traditional dishes during specific festivals or believed to have medicinal properties. The preparation methods and consumption rituals of blood clams vary, reflecting the deep-rooted customs and beliefs of local communities. Understanding this cultural dimension helps to fully grasp why, despite the risks, blood clams continue to be sought after and revered in these societies. Shanghai wasn't taking any chances and banned blood clams until 2023. But who knows, they might extend that ban. If you ever find yourself in China and tempted to try them, exercise caution. Thanks for the heads up. About 14 to 16 percent of people could end up with a nasty case of hepatitis A from these clams. And there's no cooking method that can kill the virus. If you do indulge in these risky mollusks, make sure to boil them. Recipes may vary, but keep an eye out for when the clams crack open slightly. Always ask where your blood clams come from, especially if it's a densely populated, pollution-heavy area. Have you ever dared to try blood clams? Or would you after learning about their risks and rewards? Yeah, I think I like that. Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into the fascinating world of these controversial shellfish, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more intriguing food mysteries and that lets us know you are liking our content. Remember, in the world of seafood, sometimes the most tantalizing flavors come with a pinch of danger. Stay curious and keep exploring the depths of culinary adventures with us.